Okay, uh, greetings brothers and sisters. few things to get to here first. Um, it's just like gray outside here. Like we got a lot of gray weather till basically uh, March. And then, um, you know, light deprivation. Just this is the bad part of the year. But anyway, Swedish alarm after defense chief's war warning. And somebody posted a tweet about this. And people in Sweden are beginning to stockpile and prepare for war um, the people in the country and so uh, they're beginning to prep like war with Russia is inevitable here's the the um, Paul Sweden right now worried about war with Russia two days ago S Swedish dining dash investigation reopened <laughs> anti-Russian paranoia Sweden's urgent war warnings mocked by Putin's mouthpiece Ken Counselor caught an air raid while on aid mission. I guess that's these are Ukrainian things here. Uh, but Sweden is somehow, uh, the war minister has warned them, or the defense minister of their country, that war might be imminent. Swedish defense minister warning to embrace war sends panic, public into panic one day ago. This is from Fox News here. And so, um, I don't know, they want some kind of subscription. And I'm not giving it to him because it's Fox. Um, <laughs> but um, Swedish Defense Minister's Army Commander Chief warned of possible armed conflict. And they are, you know, beginning to prep there. You know, we have a World War III watch. There was just news today of uh, the U.S. bombing Yemen, right? The country of Yemen. And these Houthi or Houthi or whatever they're called. It's actually pronounced Houthi, like Houthi and the Blowfish. That's what they're saying on the news and I said to my wife, and she goes, I think it's Huthi. <laughs> and she just called me. I'm, I'm farther along editing the video, but I had to go back and change that kind of funny. But they're called Houthi, and they're, you know, they're um, an asset, or they're connected to Iran. So it's about Iran. And um, America and Great Britain did joint airstrikes, a number of them, in a Muslim country. So we're pushing towards World War III, and, you know, they have this thing now with Russia and Sweden. Now, Sweden isn't a, you know, a threat militarily. So that means it's a NATO war, right? This is a war where you're going to war with a NATO country, and that means America is at war with you. So if Russia is going to war with Sweden, then Russia is going to war with America, and then World War Three is there. And people are beginning to prep. And, you know, it just doesn't look great. Again, amateur hour... Um, there's a lot of sloppy stuff already. There are a lot of perennial coaches in the NFL, Bill Belichick and um, Nick Saban in uh, college in Alabama and Pete Carroll. These are professional coaches. You know, this is like some end of a like era here in football. And you see um, a lot of just amateur behavior, right? Even perennial, perennial um, teams like Golden State Warriors falling apart. You see this there, you know. It's very much an amateur hour type situation. But in terms of the war watch, you know, we're on a war watch until, you know, it happens, right? <laughs> like it's like the inevitable here. And what people don't understand, you know, I've covered this extensively earlier on, that the numbers just don't add up economically. And with all of the bailouts and all the COVID stuff and all the, you know, these big projects that Joe Joe Magoo wants to do, infrastructure projects, all these things going on, the dollar should be devalued. Like they've printed more money and the dollar should have lost significant value, like 100% of its value. Like everything should be doubled in price. Inflation should be 100%, but it's like 3%, 5%, whatever it is, they've done it incrementally. But, you know, whatever, collectively, people see the prices have gone up, but not as much as they should. And so when that is happening, and there is, you know, I mean, we're on the bridge of economic collapse and all these things, the brink of economic collapse, then, you know, war is usually something that happens for America. War has solved America's economic problems before. And, you know, we've had these wars recently, a lot of them, because of that, right? Because the economic collapse had already happened years and years ago. And so it's just a matter of time. Then along with this, um, 
one of my viewers sent me this and then Google sent me this because I do some advertising with them which really hasn't gone well but it says dear advertiser in February 2024 Google will update the inappropriate content policy to clarify definition of sensitive events a sensitive event is unforeseen event or development that creates significant risk to Google's ability to provide high quality relevant information and ground truth and reduce insensitive or exploitive content in prominent and monetized features during a sensitive event. We may take a variety of actions to address these risks. Example of sensitive events include events with significant social, cultural, or political impact, such as civil emergencies, natural disasters, public health emergencies, terrorism, and related articles related activities, conflict, and a mass acts of violence. And that might be why they are yellowing, you know, they're beginning to do this process. They're yellowing my videos with um, the title of Miami Aliens, right? So anything that is a sensitive event where there's going to be a BS official story, they're going to, you know, uh, censor anything that contradicts the official story. You know, they're already making it so it's hard to find people reporting on this. You know, this is where YouTube has lost its, you know, whatever it is. Product or services that exploit or dismiss or condone this sensitive event, including price gouging or artificial inflating prices that prohibits, restricts access to vital supplies, sales of products or services, which may be insufficient for the demand during a uh, sensitive time, using key... Uh, words related to a sensitive event to attempt to drive additional traffic claims that victims of sensitive events were responsible for their own tragedy or similar instances of victim blaming claims that victim of a sensitive event are not deserving of remedy or support claims that victims for certain countries were responsible or deserving of a bo uh, global public health crisis and so this might have a lot to do with Israel um, probably does and so um, you know all those videos have to be <laughs> have to go back and um, privatize or delete those videos because you know they make it retroactive. Um, anything that you know, I mean, this is how they do, right? This is uh, this time of year, entering into into the political campaign at the beginning of it, they scrub a lot of channels and a lot of content, and so um, you know anything that's not the official story, they're going to send uh, they're going to censor and all these things. Um, new COVID variant heart failure. What we know about COVID's connection to heart problems, how SARS-CoV-2 contributes to heart attacks and strokes. These are all recent. Um, COVID strain J1 could trigger a global heart failure pandemic for your experts. Study explains how COVID heightens risk of attack, uh, heart attack and stroke. You know, all these things that are happening because of the bloop, right? Or at least, you know. That's the main reason. Like a lot of us have had uh, regular heartbeats and weird heart stuff when we had COVID or post-COVID. And then this one here, post-COVID heart failure pandemic possible, Japan researchers say. So a pandemic would mean there's going to be people dropping like flies from heart failure. And maybe when they're driving a bus or your school bus or flying a plane or who knows what, right? These things are, you know, we already seen the heart failure uh, pandemic happening amongst young people, athletes, and all these people. And they're just going to blame COVID because, of course, they are, right? But now they're putting this out in the news. I'm going to cover this again on my, um, you know, my other channel, the Apocalypse Now, which all these things are, all my channels you can find in any description box of any video on any channel. Predicted risk of heart failure pandemic due to persistent uh, something or other. You know, these things, right? So this is um, what I know about COVID's connection to heart problems. This is, you know, they're, they're starting to go in this direction. Google and Bing put non-consensual non deep fake porn at top of some search results. Google, Google and other search engines included non-consensual deep fake porn in the top image search results alongside the tools that advertise the ability to create such material. And so um, this is not good for them when they're starting to censor these other events, right? And they're, you know, they're pushing for censorship. 
Okay, so one of my viewers sent me this. Um, this is Hillary Clinton, and boy, does she suck. And apparently, Jojo Magoo, not apparently, Jojo Magoo, plagiarized her suckiness. I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. No boy, her voice, I mean, Jesus. <laughs> Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. We've come too far from where we started. Nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. My fellow Americans, I don't think the good Lord brought us this far to leave us behind. Okay, um... She was, you know, the person saying she's he's plagiarizing. And Hillary Clinton, that's not her original. She's reading something, right? This is some literary work, maybe written by slaves or something, or, you know, I don't know who wrote that, right? Um, but, you know, it just goes to show you they both suck, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's hard to listen to. They're both so hard to listen to. Hillary even more so. Bring your drug dealer to work day. <laughs> And then one of my viewers sent me this um, from Tucker Carlson. Let's give it a look-see here. In the United States, we often refer to our main sources of energy as fossil fuels. Oil, natural gas, coal, they're fossil fuels because they come from fossils. Ancient organic material, forests, jungles, plankton, dinosaurs. Held under the ground for millennia, they transform into oil, gas, and coal. Everybody thinks that's true. On the other hand, there's evidence that maybe it's not the whole story. If that's where fossil fuels come from, if that's how hydrocarbons are made, then how come they're found so deep under the ocean? Okay, so um, I never really bought into the idea of fossil fuels, right? So there's, you know, evidence. You'll find ancient civilizations that are underground. Let me move to something else here. You know, there's these deep-rooted weeds. I just saw a couple of dandelions um, trying to sprout out. They must have thought it was spring. It got warm for here for a couple of days. I ate the heads of them because, you know, we eat a lot of dandelion in the spring. It's a good, and I'm not recommending anything because, you know, I don't do that. But for me, it's good. You know, it's, a, it's good food for the liver. But you have these deep-rooted weeds, right? Um, another good example of this is something we have growing here is comfrey root. Comfrey is a a plant um, that can have 15 foot roots and what that does is it brings up minerals from the subsoil and you can use the comfrey leaves in your compost and it'll mineralize, mineralize your soil and then when you you know eat food from that soil you'll have more minerals and things you know things you will you would be getting from supplements so comfrey is good for a lot of different things and we have comfrey growing and of course then you have the layers of the earth right and if you ever see um if you've ever seen um the show gold rush you know there's soil topsoil which is what we grow things in it and that is growing right like topsoil is something where you know, leaves and grass, like every, uh, it takes like a thousand years for grass to produce an inch of topsoil because grass ends up, you know, the, the bottom of the turf ends up turning into soil and the grass just, you know, the, the layers go above from that. And then we have things like leaves and, and trees and things like that um, breaking down and whatever, you know, animal life and things dying and, you know, it adds to the topsoil. And of course, things are moved around by wind and you know, wind, wind storms and things. But you find ancient civilizations that are buried under layers and layers of soil and subsoil. And so you have the topsoil that you grow things in. Then you have your subsoil like clay or sand or whatever's there. And then you have below that, you have bedrock, right? So here you have the, the layered here, which is, they call hummus, which is grass, topsoil, subsoil, um, weathered rock fragments and then you get down to bedrock right this is a better you know this is the organic matter up top and the topsoil the subsoil and you have see the, some of the 
the plant's roots will go into the subsoil, and then it, it stops at the substrate, and then you get down to bedrock, right? And so if you've ever seen the show um, Gold Rush, gold is heavy, and they have to get down to bedrock to find the gold. The gold will rest right here. There'll be layers of rock and pebbles here, right? Um, and then, you know, below that, the gold can't go through the bedrock. So the gold's going to, you know, it's going to be heavy and it's just going to go through these other layers and it's going to be at the bottom of all this stuff. So there, there are situations where the people who are mining gold on the show have to dig through 60, 70 years of what they call overburden. And that's everything that's above the bedrock. And sometimes it's only 10 feet above the bedrock's only 10 feet below that, right? You know, of course, you have creeks and riverbed, right? But what's important to understand is the bedrock, you know, this is the Flintstones lived on bedrock, right? That's how they, you know, the <laughs> Flintstones, you know, lived in the town of bedrock. And so what you have here is, you know, the bedrock is, is in this layer here, right? And then they have this, you know, this is um, the Earth's crust, which is, you know, you have layers of rock you know, the mantle of the earth and these things above it, right? You have layers above that, right? Um, and, you know, the mantle is where you're going to have molten rock and lava. And so how is there organic matter below the rock? Like how does organic matter penetrate below the rock? How is there a layer of rock on top of, you know, all the things that we know as human life and animal life and, and forest and trees and things like this? exists above the earth's crust above the the layer of rock because it you know there can't be any life below rock right and the the rock is broken down into soil and subsoil you know there's little particles of it like things coming off the mountain and that's where the you know all this soil is coming from it's coming from leaves and trees and and uh, you know particles of the mountain and sand and things you know sand and clay and all these things coming off the mountain right when you when the mountains erode from wind and rain and things. You know, if you look at the planet being formed by layers, and again, we can't trust modern day science because there's an agenda there. And there's things they just don't know. But if you're looking at something starting off at some sort of a gas giant or some kind of a, a gaseous plant planet that's, you know, that's not solid in form, something like Jupiter and these other, you know, I guess there's oil on, Saturn and some of these other things are there, right? But these planets that don't have a hard crust and they don't have any topsoil, they don't have any life. Of course, it's, you know, there might be water or ice or something there on, on top, but, but something like an asteroid or a meteor that is a big rock that's just floating around the universe, there's nothing on it. There's no soil, there's no erosion, you know, there's no water or wind or weather and things to erode the rock and break it down into something that's soil based right and then you're going to have organic life and you know you're going to have things that create some sort of soil and water and you know these things that are on the surface of the of the earth right and so there's going to be a surface layer of life and that's what they're talking about right that there's an organic layer of life and then you're going to get down to the rock again that you know these planets and meteors and things are composed of rock and there's not going to be any life below that. Why would there be, right? And not enough to create some sort of oil, like maybe a few, you know, things bury through the rock. I mean, we're talking about, you know, feet and, you know, I mean, sometimes like miles of rock, you know. So you're talking about the, the mountains and these tectonic plates and these, you know, solid objects. So it doesn't make any sense that you drill through the rock and find oil. It's just another BS thing they're, they're trying to shill and sell to us for whatever reason. You know, and if it's just organic matter like compost, then, um, you know, you take the oil out of the ground, what comes in its place, right? Because there's going to be a vacuum there. You're drilling through a solid surface and you're pumping this stuff out. It's going to create a vacuum, like a syringe, right? The oil's going to come up and something has to fill the oil's space. You know, there's no air there and there's water and things like this, but lava, I don't know what's going on there, what they... You know, I don't know about that much about the drilling process, and I don't think they'll tell you. But what they probably don't want you to know is what they're pumping out of the ground is supposed to be there for whatever reason, for the betterment of the earth. 
And once you bring it to the surface, of course, it's going to cause pollutants and you're taking something that is buried beneath the earth for a reason and you're bringing it up to the surface and they're using it in various capacities and transforming it from oil to gas and then gas into exhaust, you know, all these other aspects of it. And our society is predicated on this, you know, doing it this way, but it's probably bad and, you know, long term could be destructive to the fundamental principles and, you know, things that uh, the earth needs to maintain its you know, present condition and future condition, right? So they're probably completely effing the earth over. And they're f and then, you know, our future as humans. For a bunch of dopes who, you know, are using and burning up fuel for no good reason. Like most of the, the stuff being done now is a waste of time. People wasting time and, and not doing anything significant. Certainly not worth wrecking the whole future and making this into some, uh, you know, plant that can't be populated, un uninhabitable planet. You know, so I think it probably has something to do with that. So I want to cover Donald Trump's town hall a little bit. This is Politico's doing a, in three minutes, so these are probably some of the lowlights for, uh, you know, Democratic perspective. For the nominee, which I know you expect to be, who would be in the running for a vice president? Well, I can't tell you that, really. I mean, I know who it's going to be. Give us a hint. I'll give you, we'll do another show sometime. Can you say tonight that political violence is never acceptable? Well, of course that's right. And of course, I'm the one that had very little of it. Take a look at wars. Again, I didn't start, I wasn't involved in wars. We beat the hell out of ISIS. We won 100%. We brought our troops back home. Look at, look at the violence that we've had. Look at the violence we have Recently, there are questions about how much a second term of a Donald Trump presidency, second term, would be about retribution and looking backwards and grievances, and how much would be looking forward. I'm not going to have time for retribution. We're going to make this country so. <laughs> There's always time for retribution, Donald. Successful again. I'm not going to have time for retribution. Woo! Just I'm not going to have time for retribution. Woo! He is a very vengeful person. For retribution. DeSantis, I don't know what he really believes, because, you know, you never know with a politician, and he's just another politician as far as I'm concerned. But uh, his... So he's not going to be your VP then? Numbers have gone down to a level that he's going to be out of the race very soon. He's going to be out very soon. You know, I watched him last night. He's standing up with his shoes, his fancy shoes. You like Ron... He's got fancy shoes. He's standing up in them. He wasn't sitting down at the debate. DeSantis, but he wouldn't even be around today. He'd be working in a pizza shop or perhaps a law firm. If I did, pizza shop. And endorse him. You know, I endorsed him. What do you him. mean a pizza shop there, Donald? Took him from nothing to winning an election. Would you pledge to divest from your business in the second term as other presidents have done? If I have a hotel and somebody comes in from China, that's a small amount of money. And it sounds like a lot of money. That's a small. But I was doing services for that. People were staying in these massive hotels, these beautiful hotels, because I have the best hotels. I have the best. He does. He has the best clubs i have the best clubs I he's got the best hotels and clubs i have great stuff and they he has great me. stuff he, donald's got the best of the best there and they pay i don't get eight million dollars for doing nothing like hunter if i didn't win I kaboom think shot at hunter the stock market would crash yeah, I but you said the when stock. there's a crash i hope it's going to be during this next 12 months because i don't want to be herbert hoover well i Just think there will be a crash if i don't win and i say that and i do not want to be herbert hoover it would have never happened in Ukraine. he doesn't want to be herbert hoover H herbert hoover doesn't have all the best stuff Ukraine, russia would have never gone in would have never happened the recent attack on israel would have never happened a hundred i mean zero percent chance that was going to happen they see a weak president in our country and they did something that was unthinkable. But if you go back and look at the records, you will see that the biggest fan of Dr. Fauci was Ron DeSanctimonious. He was. He was. He's, he's into he really crapping all over Sant DeSantis, who has no chance of winning anything. Big fan. He said, I go by, exactly, quote, I go by what Dr. Fauci said. He said that two months in, all the way through, and then eventually changed when it wasn't, you know. Yeah, we remember you doing the same thing. Mr. Operation Warp Speed. Like these people who vote for Trump, you can't forgive them for Operation Warp Speed. You, forgive, you, can, you can maybe forgive them, but not forget that he totally shilled for that. He was responsible. He was Trump will let, let them run him and completely play him on the whole COVID thing. It wrecked the end of his presidency. It destroyed him. 
politically and it, he lost all credibility and you know trumpers should admit this right because it's you know it's the facts right it's there's no debate here he pushed operation warp speed he called himself the uh, you know let me um let me run my memes here very long we've instituted it before two additional companies astrazeneca and johnson and johnson uh, as you know the johnson and johnson's a one dose one shot vaccine so we're going to see how that works that would be very helpful if that all came out and i think it probably will also they're showing tremendous uh, tremendous promise all of them tremendous problem we're we're uh, we're very hopeful that the fda will authorize the pfizer vaccine within days we've got to get it moving and moderna vaccine almost immediately thereafter uh, large numbers of tests and samples have been done, so hopefully that'll go very quickly. If authorized, tens of millions of vaccine doses will be available this month, and we'll get it distributed very quickly. We have that all set, and hundreds of millions more will quickly follow. Every American who wants the vaccine will be able to get the vaccine, and uh, we think by spring we're going to be in a position that uh, nobody would have believed possible just a few months ago. Yeah. Amazing. Really amazing. They say, it's, they say it's somewhat of a miracle, and I think that's true. The plan we put forward prioritizes the elderly and patients with underlying conditions, as well as health care workers and first responders. The greatest achievements was getting the vaccine done in nine months instead of five and a half to 12 years. But the problem is, you know, we saved tens of millions of lives all over the world, but I can't talk about it because our base, our beautiful base of which some of you are there, you get angry when we mention the word vaccine. Don't get angry. You did everything you could to get this vaccine out. I know it was you one of the, the greatest vaccine. achievements. We did it in less than nine months. And to be able to do that. Yes, but we're, but to now it's taken a twist, right? And then people don't want it. And it probably even affects the others because, you know, there's a big situation with a lot of people don't want to take the vaccine well this played right into their hands and they want me to do public service messages and everything about everybody taking the vaccine and look i guess in a certain way i'm the father of the vaccine because i was the one that pushed it you know to get it done in less than nine months was a miracle fauci said it would take three to five years he thought it was uh, something that just wouldn't be that effective because it would take so long to get we i pushed the fda like they have never been pushed before. I wouldn't exactly say they're, uh, they're in love with me. They have never, this is a very bureaucratic organization. I push them like they've never been pushed before, and that's why we have it. The vaccine is one of the greatest achievements of mankind. We would have had a 1917, remember the Spanish flu, killed perhaps 100 million people. Can you imagine if you had to go through what all of the countries of the world who are now getting the vaccine or soon will be getting it from various companies. But can you imagine if all of those countries had to go through what they've been going through over the last year? You'd lose hundreds of millions of people. Let the teachers get the vaccine. They should get the vaccine. I hope they do. Again, it's something I'm very proud of. I think if we didn't come up during the Trump administration with a vaccine, you could have a hundred. And look, I guess in a certain way, I'm the father of the vaccine because I was the one that pushed it. You know, to get it done in less than nine months was a miracle. That wasn't the dessert of the day. If it weren't for me with Roe v. Wade, you wouldn't even be talking about this. You wouldn't be asking that question because we're right back. And remember this, they're the radicals. We're not the radicals. In the debate with, with Hillary Clinton, I said, they said, you know, she's willing to rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month. Would you be committed to NATO, for example, in a second Trump term? Depends if they treat us properly. The reason they have money right now to prosecute what they're doing with helping Ukraine is because of the money I got them. Um, okay, here um, he's talking about nobody cares about Chris Christie. We appreciate you making the track. And before we begin, we want to offer our condolences to you and the former First Lady Melania Trump for the loss of her mother last night. Thank you very much. Great woman. Thank you very much. Great appreciate woman. It. She was a wonderful woman. Appreciate it. We she was do, the best. I have the best mother-in-law. I have all the best stuff. I want to note that today there was some breaking campaign news. Take a listen. It's clear to me tonight that there isn't a path 
for me to win the nomination. There was never a path for you to win the nomination. There was never a path. You wouldn't have won if you hadn't gone up against Trump. Nobody had a path to win unless Trump went to jail. But even if he went to jail, you weren't going to win. You were always, you know, I mean, what was his top, what was he polling at? He's just not a guy that's going to win president. I mean, some people, like, are even at a lower tier than Jojo Magoo and Trump in terms of, you know, people being able to vote for him. You never had a chance to win. And then you went in against Trump, which I appreciate him doing it because, you know, he said truthful things, but Trumpers can't hear that. So there's no chance of you winning. Like you're doing it now because you still want to get embarrassed in these upcoming polls, you know, primaries, Iowa and, and New Hampshire. Uh, but, you know, you don't have any money, right? Which is why I'm suspending my campaign tonight. No. For president. No. In the United States. I am going to make sure that in no way do I enable Donald Trump to ever be president of the United States again. So that was the big news uh, late today. The former governor. See, Fox, these guys screwed Trump on 2020. You know, I watched some of Fox News that night, and they were first to announce some of these states, and they didn't stand up for him like they did in 2016 and that's why the election night went the way it went Fox News bailed on him and, and he you know knew it and he attacked Fox News afterwards but he doesn't have any other mainstream outlet here and so he's got to go back to Fox News even though they screwed him over you know Trump is a big guy who's vengeful and he holds grudges but that's the situation that he's in that Fox News completely you know they said we're not having Trump and Fox News and the Republicans work together to get rid of Trump. It's not Biden. It's not, you know, the liberal media. It was Fox News and the Republicans that screwed Trump, right? And, you know, they didn't want him. They were looking for, to get rid of him forever. Governor of New Jersey dropped out of the race in New Hampshire. You saw it there. Uh, there's a lot of speculation now that there could be a combining of forces of the people who supported him. He had about 12 percent there. And by some estimates, you're ahead by an average of 14 in the Real Clear Politics average polling in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire. So if, if that 12 goes to Nikki Haley, she could give you a run for your money there. Well, you know, you have Democrats in New Hampshire, and they vote. And you have independents in New Hampshire in large numbers, and they vote. And I have polls that show me leading by a tremendous amount in New Hampshire and a lot in Iowa and nationwide we're leading by almost 60 points so I'm not exactly you know why are you even talking about it like it's not going to make any difference exactly worried about it I understand New Hampshire very well I've won it twice and did very well with New Hampshire I love the people they love me I think uh, we did a <laughs> you know I got the best people there in New Hampshire a small business owner from uh, Brines is that correct Kim where are you that is correct do you know who you're um, caucusing for Monday I am proud to say I am a caucus captain for President Trump with a okay. white and gold hat. I have that white and gold Thank hat. Thank you very much. That's He's got the white and gold hat. It's, a, it's the best hat. Thank you very much. Trump has the best hats. Uh, what's your question for the former president? You said that you can take care of the border in 24 hours yep. after taking office. How will you gather the several millions that have already entered our country illegally and return them to their country of origin? Great question. It's not sustainable for our country. We have millions and millions of people here. It is not sustainable. Did you see in New York City with it getting the regular students out and they're putting migrants in their place? This it never would have happened under Trump. We are going to have the largest deportation effort in the history of our country. Kaboom, right? So that's going to happen. Peace through strength. You know, uh, I just saw something where I, d I was the only president for 78 years. No war started with now I wiped out. It wasn't because he was great. He just didn't order them. You know, he didn't allow them to do these things or didn't order them to do them, right? Like, you know, the whole idea of ISIS and these things. I mean, that's to his credit. Um, you know, it's something that I always said was good that he did. I mean, the wars are a big thing to me, these illegal wars. And he didn't, you know, he didn't allow those things to happen because he didn't 
you know, make them happen. The intelligence community wasn't running amok doing these things. At ISIS, you know, I did a thing that was, I won't go into names, I won't go into specifics, but we did a thing that nobody thought was possible. We told them, hey, ISIS, stop doing stuff because you're our asset. <laughs> I did very quickly. I withdrew from Syria. I withdrew from Iraq. I withdrew. They want to put people back. We're in countries that don't even want us. We're with countries that a lot of you never even heard the names of these countries. You know, there's a great leader, in my opinion, is very strong. Some people say it's terrible to say that, but he is. Viktor Orban, he's the prime minister of Hungary. And they asked him, what would you do? There are wars all over the world right now. He said, what I do is make sure the American people vote for Donald Trump for president, because when he was president, China feared him. I don't want to be feared, but he used He doesn't want to be feared. I don't want to fear the deer. Term. I'm not using the term. President Xi is a very tough cookie. But I think they did fear us. China feared him. Russia feared him. Everybody. I even got along with Kim Jong-un. You know, getting along with people with hundreds of nuclear weapons is not a bad thing. You know, they want to make it like a bad thing. It's a very good thing. But peace through strength. Okay, so he's an ass clown, but, you know, that's kind of true. Because he wasn't run by you know trump's run by israel he's run by the financial markets that you know he's run by the the bankers i mean those are his handlers but the military industrial complex not so much like trump was into the military but he didn't push all these illegal wars and things he pushed back against them right and isis and the rest of it so um i talked about chavez shava shabit chavez here this um one of my viewers sent me this. Why am I not allowed to use toilet paper on Chavez? Hi, my name's Miriam. Hey, Miriam. I'm an Orthodox Jew, and I share what my life is like. Chavez is the Jewish day of rest, and there are 39 acts of work that we refrain from doing, one of which is tearing. You can't be tearing. That's a, that's a lot of work, you know. You can't be doing all kinds of tearing all day. <laughs> um you know, I read this, and I didn't understand what Terry meant, but now it makes sense. Because the other girl talked about having individual pieces of toilet paper already pre-torn. So it's not that we're not allowed to use toilet paper. We're not allowed to tear it. So what people do is they will pre-tear the toilet paper before Shabbos, or cut it, or... What is it? There's a backup plan. Some people will use tissues. No way. I didn't even see that coming. But be careful. When using tissues, there's a marking on the box that says not to dispose of it in a toilet. That's why. So, boom, we got to be careful that. We have a little trash bin next to all of our toilets. And throwing. That's uh, a little bit too. That's TMI. Use toiletries in the bin is actually something that a lot of countries practice on a daily basis because their septic system can't handle toilet paper so to learn more about my life as an orthodox jew don't forget to hit the follow button good boom tick tock so that happened um so i talked a little bit about rituals um you know that i talked about this because someone sent me a uh a video from face uh twitter with a girl who was doing all these hacks for shavas shabbat shabbat whatever it is um, it's spelled Shabbat, but they pronounce it Chavez or something. Anyway, she had ripped toilet paper. She also had wigs, and they're not allowed to show their hair. So my wife pointed that out to me. Um, like somehow she she found that out. But um, you know, I agree with the idea of getting away from modern day, you know, whatever. And I talked about that a little bit. My family and I turned off the electricity and did a dry run of what it would be like to live without electricity because we had lost electricity in a storm and I made a video we didn't lose power we just lost electricity because the idea that electricity is power and without it you don't have anything and so you know that's not a bad thing to go without from time to time and you know it's very peaceful and going camping and these things you know I'm into all that I mean I'm you know older now and I don't know, I'm roughing it isn't, you know, but it's a, you know, it's something that's good in a variety of ways. And preparing, you know, it's like doing a fire drill and seeing the holes in your system. Like if you lost electricity right now, what are the holes in your system? How are you going to dispose of your waste, your human waste, 
if you can't flush a toilet like these things right and you know all these things that you don't think about until it happens and this is why I was talking about waste of time in my last video and a way to figure out what you're going to need is you know just do some trial runs and see what you're missing out like you know how long uh, how much stuff you have and when you run out of those things how long before you run out of food you run out of water how long before you have to leave your apartment or your home or whatever because you're out of supplies you know how long before you're driven from your your existence because you don't you didn't prepare well enough right the idea of prepping so you know like in terms of that I think this might not be a bad thing I mean again you know this is something that's been around for a while something an ancient ritual right and you know my uh, knowledge of the stereotype the stereotypes about Jewish people is that you know they're success driven and again I had friends who were Jewish that weren't but the family is very uh, you have different cultures you know all cultures have some element or pressuring their kids to be successful in the material world but there is a lot of performance you know uh, a high level of pressure to perform and to be on the top of uh, you know to succeed materially in the Jewish culture and again it's not everybody but it's a cultural thing and so I think this idea of uh, for them to take a day off and, and not do all these works right and it might have been some woman who was like all right no tearing right <laughs> her husband was you know was supposed to be resting and being in uh, you know and he was doing some tearing so they you know maybe these are where some of these rules and ideas came from right and so you know rituals in themselves there are a lot of rituals in India in terms of the Saj Marg meditation that I do that the masters of the system are working on getting the practitioners to stop doing those rituals because many of them had become counterproductive mantras and ritualistic behaviors the um, third master of the, of the Saj Marg system his mom died in childbirth and he's a Brahmin you know a southern Indian where there's a lot of um, you know spiritual uh, you know pressure on the, their spiritual life uh, you know they're, they're spiritual people often professors and you know uh, these um, these guys that go around the country and you know they're sannyasis and they withdraw from society and they have these these painted lines in their foreheads and they you know they'll beg door to door and then they'll you know give spiritual blessings you know there's just a culturally they have a lot of rituals and one of those were a morning bath that's a lot of people in India have this as a ritual and you know after you give birth they're supposed to take a bath and Charji's uh, mother this uh, the master the third master of the system you know this is back in the early 1900s took a cold bath and got a chill and got sick and she died a couple years later she never really recovered and he blamed the ritual for that, right? An unnecessary ritual when she should have been resting. You know, she just recovered from giving birth. And her, you know, her daughter died. His sister died. So uh, he was like five years old, lost his mom and his, and his uh, sister. And, you know, there are these rituals in India and these other countries. All these ancient cultures have them. And many of the rituals had a purpose at their time, mantras and things like this. But they don't really do anything now, right? And that's one of the problems with like ancient religions and ancient cultures. Practices get put into place. You know, they have these like blue laws. You know, back when I grew up in Connecticut, there was a, there was a law that you can't bring your bear into the supermarket. Like crazy stuff like that. I remember watching a, a news program about they're reading all these laws that were obviously for the pioneering days and, you know, weren't for the you know 1980s when I grew up, right? and so on 70s and 80s and now of course modern day times and so as times change and cultures change a lot of these rituals get warped or their original purpose and things gets perverted in some way and it just doesn't apply to what's going on in modern day you know, society and the best way to connect to God is just close your eyes and connect to God right God's internal to everybody and that's one of the brilliance of the Sajmark system. So you have these religions and these cultures that have all these traditions. And you see what's happened with Christmas, right? Like Christmas has been degraded. Where it was once a celebration of Jesus' birth. 
now is materialism and it's a Santa Claus holiday and all that stuff like I've talked about. You know, it just becomes something where the ritual itself actually does the reverse of what it's supposed to do. And then people start gaming the ritual and they don't really know why they're doing it and, you know, it becomes something else, right? And so, um, you know, you can see this, I've covered this with this particular, you know, ritual and holiday. And that's why direct contact with God is the best. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramount, will definitely born from the apocalypse. In the ascension, everyone have a blessed day. And be grateful.